You're listening to Potty Mouth Radio, the home of movies, music, television, and comedy. This podcast is filmed in front of a live studio audience and contains coarse language. Could it be any more spoilery about a 25-year-old sitcom? Hello everybody and welcome back to the one where we watched a Friends Rewatch podcast where this week we watched the one with the evil orthodontist. How you doing, Noosk? I'm good. That's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, guess what? What? We got some lovely, lovely feedback on the show. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, we got a couple of... Uh, um, not just from your mum? No, not just my mum. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know she's listening, though, so hi, Mum. <laughs> Thank you for your feedback. <laughs> no, nah, mate, we got uh, we got a couple of uh, reviews on uh, iTunes. Oh, okay. uh, we've, we've got a couple of five stars on Spotify, so Ooh. thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, Very nice. But, uh, yeah, just thought I'd shout out uh, Javon Walsh, who on Apple Podcasts said, uh, they don't like the pilot episode, so already I was iffy, but no, seriously, <laughs> I love this podcast for multiple reasons. One, could it be any more friends? <laughs> Two, the host's voice are so soothing. Soothing. Three, then you learn the they're Australian, which is cool, because I'm an American in Georgia, so that's cool. Four, the hosts are a married couple, and it shows in all the best ways. Shows. The guy is so happy-go-lucky, and I love that his wife is the opposite. <laughs> Oh, oh, man. If only you knew the truth. It's quite lovely and balances out perfectly. I wish they did two episodes a week. I could listen to them talk about nothing. Absolutely top tier podcast. So oh. thank you. Thanks for that. That's awesome. That's very nice. Um, Javon, was it? Yeah. Am I saying that right? I, th- I think so. Um, yeah. Billy is not happy go lucky. Oh, man. It's all a ruse. <laughs> He is the most highly strung person I oh, know, that is, and I am the relaxed one. Oh, that is a complete untruth. No, it's not. <laughs> Let's get into it. The one with the evil orthodontist is the 20th episode of Friends. It aired on April 6, 1995, and it's written by Dottie Abrams. Good on you, Dottie. Fun fact for you, this is our first on-screen appearance of Mindy. Uh, mm. But it's not the real Mindy. No, this is Jennifer Grey. Did yes. you did you even recognise her? So she felt familiar to me, but I was just so fixated on the fact that it wasn't the real Mindy. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it, this is it obviously is post Grey. nose job. Yeah. She shouldn't have done anything to her face. Yeah. She's not recognisable at mm. all. Yeah, I, I didn't recognise her at all. But yeah, so of course, Jennifer Grey, most famous for Dirty Dancing and uh, being Genie in Ferris Bueller. Fun fact for you. Do you, feel, do you feel like she looks a bit too old for the rest of the cast? Like, they're all She of, does look like a Like, Barry and Mindy, I assume, are supposed to be the same age as Rachel. Yeah, I mean, Min- so Jennifer Grey definitely is older. Here's a fun fact for you. When the short-lived television series of Ferris, Ferris Bueller... Uh, was on the air. Jennifer Aniston played Jeannie. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, did they know each other then? No, I don't no. think so. This, this was after. This it's was... like a weird crossover type yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Just thought it was a fun fact for you. It is a fun fact. Thank you. Well. Uh... Oh, that's so much fun. <laughs> anyway, Shut that's up. the end of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I'm so happy-go-lucky. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck um, they knew. Well, it's your turn to do the synopsis oh, for us. Crap. How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll be right. I'll be right. I got this. <laughs> All right, let's do it. You because ready? Because I am also very happy go lucky, if oh, you will. Sh- yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be lelling at me any second. <laughs> All right. In three, two, one. Okay, so Rachel has gone out with Barry. And Ross is being a complete baby about it. She doesn't end it. And the episode goes further with that. Um, Chandler has gone on the best first date ever. And he's waiting for the girl to call. Um, The group encourage, the girls encourage him to call her. And apart from that, there's a perverted person with a telescope looking in their window. You did it. You absolutely did it. That was 27 seconds. And I wasn't short for breath. No, but not I do a, hate that sound. Yeah, <laughs> no, you don't. You love it. I hate Actually, that was it. That was another piece of feedback that we got. That the sound is shit, <laughs> and you should change it. Why didn't you read that review out? Uh, I want you to re- <laughs> wait. There's more. 
<laughs> Read me all the reviews. Uh, not a review, but wonderful listener of the show, Paul Leonidu, who um, is a patron of We Watched a Thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he did post on the uh, Potty Mouth Radio listener community group on Facebook saying, I've got a few episodes of the one where we watched to catch up on. Only thing is, I listen to it in the evening as I'm chilling. Billy Dunham, have you changed the sound yet? <laughs> And you have not. Um, change the sound. Yeah. <laughs> he said every time Noosk said change it, I was thinking that sound has to change, followed by he's not going to change it. And uh, look, I promise I'm going to change it. It, it will It will change. You need to change it's, it. It's happening. It's, it's going to change. Because someone, also, someone else also said our voices are soothing, and yeah. that is not soothing. It, it is. It's. I don't it's think my voice calming. is soothing at all. <laughs> I hate my voice. Uh, so let's get into it. So um, cold open of the episode. We start with um, a bit of a you know unrelated sequence, yep. which it's been a while since we've had one of those. I like them. Um, where Ross is saying that he can't believe that Joey thinks Mr. Peanut is better than Mr. Salty. Mm. Um, I think that this is one that well and truly we are missing as non-Americans. Yeah. I don't know who Mr. Salty is. Apparently he's a sailor. He's the toughest snack there is. And then Ross says, uh, what's cr- crazy? Corn nuts. Corn nuts. You don't want to mess with corn nuts. They're crazy. Haven't had them either. I'm guessing that's <laughs> maybe like corn nuts catchphrase. You know, like yeah. I, th- yeah. there are some that have seeped through to Australian culture. Like, for example, we don't have what's the juice that always bursts through the walls? Um, oh, it's in Family Guy episodes. Yeah, like that we we know about here. Even Kool Aid. Kool Aid. Um, yeah. Like we don't actually have that here, but we know that. Even like that's just cordial, isn't it? I Kool-Aid? think so. Yeah. yeah. Even like Terry the Tiger, like they're great. Again, we don't have that we here, have but that. we know about it. But corn nuts, salty, Mr. Peanut, I know none of these things. Oh, Mr. Peanut's got the monocle, doesn't he? He is the fancy one. Yeah, yes. I have seen him in relation to something to do with baseball. <laughs> peanuts. <laughs> and peanuts. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I do find this opener funny. It just, it's one of those really interesting ones where I find it funny, even though I have no relation to it. I just whatsoever. like that, you know, that's the kind of crap you talk about with your friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a nice opening. It's well written. Yeah. It's uh, it's interrupted, though, by them noticing that someone with a telescope is watching them from across the, um, yeah. the street. That is very disconcerting. Well, it is. And yet they never close their curtains. It is disconcerting, but I actually, I really like the way that the the scene ends where they're like, oh, that is so, that's that's awful. Who would do that? Such an invasion of privacy. <laughs> yeah. And then Phoebe notices that ugly naked guy got gravity boots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which come back in my favorite I was episode. just going to say, I, I like that that comes, a little peek behind the curtain. We love Friends so much that we've just, conti- we're, we're in episode <laughs> six right now of rewatching. Season six. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Season six right now of rewatching. But I love that, uh, yes, when Ross is going for the apartment, they're like, well, we know that he, he got gravity boots, but he broke those. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're so sad. Uh, so then the episode proper starts. We're in the coffee shop and Chandler is telling everyone about a date that he went on that he says years from now, school children will study it as the best first date. Yeah. This episode isn't studied <laughs> um, like even as one of the best friends episodes. So they're definitely not talking about Chandler's <laughs> first date. I know it's like him talking to his like friends and bragging, but it's just... Oh, I don't know. Does anyone believe Chandler could be that charming on the first try? <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, I think it's later on, isn't it? That No, no, it's even earlier than this. When um, people say that the first time they meet him, they think he's gay. He has a quality. A quality, yeah. yeah. But also, yeah. like, his sarcasm and his jokes and stuff. Like, I mean, I, like, it, it, it could throw people, definitely. Do you remember our first date? Yeah, we went to Asian Cafe. Yeah. And your dad had given you a $50 bill. <laughs> and, note, and I was note. like 55 cents short. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you were five cents short. <laughs> right. <laughs> we don't have anything lower than five cents here in Australia. So. <laughs> uh, but we still didn't even have five cents. And we were like, oh, we're so sorry. Like, we we could, cl- like, you know, clear tables for you. And they were like, it's fine. Can you just go? <laughs> we need the table. <laughs> um. But, you know, unlike Chandler, after our first date, I called. The girls ask if he's going to call. He's not. To which Joey mm-hmm. says, yeah, let her dangle. Yeah. And, of course, the girls are like, ugh, I love Monica's line here. 
I can't believe my parents are encouraging me <laughs> to, to find, find one, one of, of you. you people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why Why are we encouraging women to find these dickheads? Yeah, men in the 90s were the worst. No, 90s? <laughs> oh, shots fired. Yeah. You're a rare breed, just like Ross. <laughs> um, but Phoebe, I, I love this, that Phoebe makes him call. Yeah. Phoebe, you know, she's the strong one. She makes him do it. But Stop he gets, being so testosterone-y. <laughs> he, I love Phoebes. But he gets her machine and just freaks out and hangs up straight away. Yeah, because um, he's I, gentler. I do find this line really funny because it's, it's, it's not... We're not at the point yet where Joey's just an idiot. This is just pure Chandler sarcasm. When Joey says her answering machine, no, a leaf blower picked up. <laughs> <laughs> it it caught me. It tickled me. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> I um maybe this is where millennial fear of talking on the phone comes from. Because are you like me? You hate talking on the I phone. I hate. Talking me too. On the if phone. I'm talking on the phone, I'm in a cold sweat usually. Yeah. I don't know why. I hate talking on the phone. Yeah, same. And uh, I don't know. Maybe this is this is the fear. This is where it came from. From Chandler. Yeah, because so embarrassing story time. I once had to call my ballet teacher, who was a scary person, and say I couldn't make it to class, and I left a voicemail saying. Hi, Anuska, it's Miss Kim. I got our names the wrong way round. <laughs> yeah. And it was mortifying. And I realised as I was hanging up, so then I called back and said, oh, hi, I'm just calling back to say I got my previous <laughs> message wrong. <laughs> so embarrassing. Yeah, that is oh, the worst. This is why 14-year-olds shouldn't have phones. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then they notice that Rachel and Barry are outside and uh, Phoebe is horrified. Not about Rachel and Barry, but because a man across the street kicked, kicked a, a pigeon. pigeon. I know. Phoebe, <laughs> Phoebe is wonderful. That's how I respond if I see someone kick a pigeon. Have you ever Don't seen do someone that. kick a pigeon? Mm, no, but that's how I would respond. I'd get very angry. Yeah, yeah. I'd yell at them. I'd lull at them, as our five-year-old would say. Yeah. Uh, so then Rachel uh, comes in and she says that uh, it, it, it went great. They went to the Russian tea room and had Kiev, to which Phoebe says, oh, not a good day for birds. <laughs> But the way she even describes Kiev, you know, the chick, uh, the chicken with the butter in it spurts out, and yeah, like yeah. it just call it Kiev. Just call Every, it a Kiev. Did everyone in the nineties not know what a chicken Kiev was? I, I was that maybe it was really exotic back then. Maybe it was. Yeah, and you had to describe <laughs> like like what happened with it for people to know what you're talking about, because <laughs> the word Kiev was too foreign. <laughs> Um, and so Ross, of course, asks how it was telling Barry to get lost. And Rachel says she didn't do it. Mm. Said it's comfortable. It's familiar. You know, he's he's different now. He's They had fun. What's wrong with that? Ross, Ross, Ross. <laughs> he's such a child this episode. Anyway, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. um, and then Monica is the one who has to bring up that, well, he's he's engaged now, Rachel. Yeah. Like to Mindy. And uh, finally, Rachel says, okay, she'll go break it up with him. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't. Yes. Cut to the next scene. Yeah. And... They fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and they did what more was than that? that. They did more than that. It's gross. They're in the dentist's office. Oh, yeah. This, this is horrific. I can't believe this made it to air. <laughs> I mean, we're just, we're just, we're assuming that this is. Supposed to be a dirty joke. Well, yeah. What else? What else would it be? They're, they're in the they're in the dentist chair, and she leans over and she goes, "It was so nice having this little sink here." <sighs> Did don't <okay>. don't. <laughs> I'm just saying. Don't nice little place to. <gasps> <laughs> you can't say that. Don't say that. I'll beep it. <laughs> yeah, you better. Don't. That's disgusting. Anyway, um. Also, I hate. I hate Barry. Like, I, I guess you're supposed to hate him. Oh, yeah. But she's definitely. like, oh, that was amazing. It was never like that. Like, I'm not crazy, right? And he goes, no, it wasn't. Yeah. Well, like, excuse me, could you leave your attitude at the door? <laughs> Fuck off. Oh, anyway, I really don't like him. Yeah, he, he's absolutely the worst. Yeah. He plays it well. Because mm. you really don't like him. Yeah. Then we cut uh, to the next scene. We're back at the apartment, and I love this. Chandler <laughs> leaves a very casual. <laughs> it's breezy. Yeah, it's very breezy. It's, it's very elegantly constructed. Oh, smile. Danielle, I wasn't expecting the machine. Give me a call when you get a chance. Jingle, jingle, jingle. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> and 
<laughs> and is it Ross who's like, what was with the keys in the bowl? <laughs> he, he wanted her to think that he was, you know, out at a, like restaurant. a restaurant or something, like somewhere busy. Oh. He's been honing it for two hours. <laughs> he wants her to think that he has some kind of a life instead of, you know, just sitting around honing a message. <laughs> Yeah, I'm starting to think this is definitely where the millennial anxiety with phone comes yeah. from. <laughs> um, so then Monica notices that Telescope Guy is back at it again. Mm-hmm. And Joey says they have to do something about it. He caught him looking into his apartment. He can't cook naked. <laughs> yeah. D- like, is f- firstly, this never comes back. Joey doesn't cook naked, whatever. But who would l- want to cook naked? What I if mean, something splashes? Well, well, that's what, what if he, you graze well, something? That, that's exactly what he says. He says toast, oatmeal, nothing that splatters. <laughs> um, but wouldn't Chandler know this? Yeah, like yeah. Chandler wouldn't allow Joey to cook naked. Chandler, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> like no way is Joey cooking naked. No. Have you ever done it? No, I just said I wouldn't. You should. Yeah. Uh, anyway, moving on. You just want your wife naked. That's stupid. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you should be. Uh, so then we're back at the dentist's office, um, and this is where Rachel is uh, getting dressed. And uh, he says that he's going to break up with Mindy. He says, let's go away this weekend to Aruba. Aruba. You would have liked it. Oh. Like, why would you remind her that actually I went with Mindy on our honeymoon? Yeah. Like, He's constantly rubbing it in her face. And Rachel is just fine with this. Yeah. So strange. It's very bizarre writing because, like, I understand they they probably wanted to do an episode where Rachel likes her life and doesn't want to go back and, and is challenged by her past. Yeah. But I don't believe for a second that she would just stand there and put up with that. Yeah. I don't like it. So then Barry's next patient comes in. It's it's a kid. Yeah. And uh, Barry just immediately starts pretending he's like inspecting Rachel's mouth. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I, I hate mouth stuff. <laughs> I, I would I would rather I'd rather be like a Richard, an eye doctor, than yeah. a dentist. I, I mouths are disgusting. My sister, as you know, was a dental hygienist for years, and she is not squeamish, of course, mm. but she once fainted at the sight of someone's mouth. Oh. God. Yeah. Oof. It was when she described it to me, I was like, holy <laughs> shit, people can walk around like that? Foul. Anyway. So the kid isn't buying it all, of course. He says, I'm 12. I'm not stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then we're back at the apartment and Chandler comes in to use the phone. He wants to check that his phone is working because, you know, the girl still hasn't called him back. Uh, Phoebe suggests something. He says, you know what, you can you can call her number. And when you get her machine, if there's lots of beeps, it mm. means she hasn't gotten her messages yet. Mm. This just takes me back to a different time. Do you remember when answering machines were literally a cassette tape? Yeah. Oh, man. Yep. So different to like now. And we like you could always leave like fun messages for your outgoing message. Like my dad always did a Bert and Ernie thing that us kids <laughs> found hilarious. <laughs> Don't press that. I don't don't even fully remember it now, but it was great. Yeah. So he calls, but uh, he doesn't get the machine. She answers and he freaks out again and hangs up. up. (laughs) (laughs) Because that means that she did get his message and didn't call him back. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He is such a child. (laughs) (laughs) Not as much as Ross. I thought you were going to say not as much as me. And I was going to be like, no, man, I'm, I'm, what's happy go lucky. (laughs) No, you're not. You are so not. (laughs) Uh, So then Rachel comes in, and this is where Monica notices dental floss in her hair. And Mm. um, Rachel admits that they had sex in his chair. You had sex in his chair? (laughs) Monica is loud. (laughs) (laughs) And then (laughs) another episode we just watched. (laughs) But then Ross, of course, freaks out because, yeah, I mean... he has every right to be upset about this, of course. No, he doesn't. He has no right. <laughs> I know. I know that. Um, yeah, he loses his mind at her. Yeah. Uh, what were you thinking? Like, he has no right to talk to her that way. Oh, no. And he, then this she, is, it's she not makes... as It's not as bad as the one where they lose the monkey and he's a complete dick to oh, her. Oh, but, but it's but very close. It's, pre- it's pretty bad. And it's... then she says, you know, it's, it's, it's like you and Carol. Um, you know, like if you, there's history there, like, yeah. and he's like, no, it's absolutely nothing like that. It's apples and oranges, orthodontists and lesbians. Yeah, which I do like that. Yeah, line. that's it. Well, sure, it's funny, except she makes a good point that he has 
know where to stand on it because she says, if Carol said, I want you right here, right now, and he gets all flustered and gets extremely angry at everyone yeah. and leaves. What a child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a friend who does this sometimes. He gets pissy at the rest of the group and he just leaves. <laughs> we well, can't do that now because he's married and his wife loves us. So he's always trapped there. <laughs> yeah. But like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. He says, I have things to do with my life. I a have a jam packed schedule. schedule. He leaves. Uh, and after he, leaves, good riddance. after he leaves, the phone rings and Chandler jumps for it. <laughs> I think this is the first really great piece of Matthew Perry uh, physical comedy. You know, we've seen a lot of David Schwimmer doing kind of silly yeah. things. But this leap from Chandler, I think. Oh, it's first, wonderful. It's, it's pretty great. Um, but it's not It's not his girlfriend. It, it's Mindy calling. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And we get a really nice sequence here. I really like the blocking of this scene because they're yes. all sitting around the couch with their feet up on the table. Yes. And Rachel... Which somehow Monica lets them do. Yeah. <laughs> and Rachel on the phone paces. Yes. Which, I mean... she's I, freaking out. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I do that with every phone call I make. Yeah, you do. You I, do. You I, pace every. There are only two ways I can make phone calls, pacing or in the car. Mm. And if I'm calling in the car, it's usually like, Hi, mum. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're always um, calling your mum on your way home. But yeah, so yeah, she just kind of walks around the table and they keep having to move their legs. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she agrees to and meet. Then, and then she sits down. Well, that's after. She she agrees to meet Mindy tomorrow. Um, and then she, she sounded weird on the phone. Yeah. yeah. I got I to gotta call Barry. And but they all lift their legs up down. again. <laughs> She goes to sit down, though, and she's like, oh, my God, I've got to call Barry. And Phoebe just has to vacate the seat to make <laughs> yeah. to make way for her. Yeah. It, it's it's really well done, actually. Yeah. Uh, so she calls Barry. <laughs> but, but, of course, Mindy answers. Mindy's there. <laughs> oh, hi, Mindy. Uh, yeah, I thought that's where you'd be. <laughs> I love Monica and Chandler's reactions. They're like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew that's where you'd be. <laughs> so funny. What a nightmare. <laughs> So then we've cut scenes. Do we get a bit of B-roll here or something in between? Because we're still Probably. at the apartment. Still at the apartment, yeah. Yeah, and Chandler is just sitting, staring at the phone. <laughs> and I really like this. Monica creeps up behind him and makes a ringing sound. <laughs> They're such cute friends. Yeah, and he tells her there's a place in hell for people like you. <laughs> yeah. That's his future wife. <laughs> so cute. Uh, and then Joey comes in the room. By the way, I forgot to mention, Joey's sweater in this episode a tier. It is, <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's it is like gorgeous. A fisherman sweater. I love it. Yes. Anyway, every he, single time yeah. we have watched this episode, you're always like, "I love Joey's sweater." Yeah. <laughs> he he comes in to tell them that telescope guy is back. Mm-hmm. Um. So presumptuous to assume he's a he. I guess you see someone doing something creepy nine yeah. out of ten times. You just assume it's a dude. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Maybe it's not presumptuous. Actually, st- statistically speaking, it's not presumptuous. Yeah, okay. exactly. Never mind. <laughs> uh, so then Rachel gets up to go. She says she's got to go get her eyes clawed out by Mindy. She's sure that she knows. You know, she hasn't heard from her in months. So why call now? Um, we went to camp together. She taught me how to kiss. And of course, Joey that's gets just... very interested. Yeah, oh, Joey. He's just very creepy sometimes and I don't why do they need to do this with his character yeah yeah well he, he gets creepy here because she's like you know I just I feel I feel bad you know I feel like like I'm the other woman I feel so and he says naughty yeah <laughs> yeah stop it Joey don't do it Joey <laughs> um so after she goes Monica tells Chandler like just call her like to which Chandler says I can't call her I have some pride <laughs> Do you? Do you? No. <laughs> no, immediately picks up the phone. Yeah. And uh, he comes up with a very clever story that he accidentally shut off his phone. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, a phone call doesn't last long, though, because she's on the other line. She's going to call him back. She's on the other line. She's going to call me back. <laughs> he chants that and does his channel dance. Yeah. Yeah. And then she's like, didn't you have to pee? <laughs> That's why I'm dancing. <laughs> it's very Chandler-esque. It's very real, though. I'm always making up stupid songs. You are. Yeah, the girls love it. Yeah. And the girls, I mean, our, our daughters. Yeah. Not me so much. Do other people not do that? Is that not like a normal thing? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I feel weird. <laughs> no. It's so cute. So then we're at the coffee shop and this is when we meet Mindy. Mindy comes in and she says we should be sitting for this. 
Yeah. Um, I think Jennifer Aniston plays the nervousness here really well. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you would be freaking out at this oh, point. 100%. Absolutely. Um, but what Mindy wants is to ask Rachel to be her maid of honour. Yeah. To which Rachel's like, yes. Mm. Because she feels guilty rather than being like, hey, he's yeah. a lying sack of shit and he's t- cheating on you. Yeah. Um, I know. Which we lead there because then Mindy immediately starts crying. Yeah, but Rachel only tells her because because she's... Mindy starts crying. No, no, no. Actually, sorry. It's not even that. It's not because Mindy starts crying. It's because she says she thinks there's someone else. And it's only after she admits yeah. that they did it. They had a side yes. thing when um, Rachel so and Barry were together. I just got to say, this is just further proof that Rachel is not a good person. Rachel was going to just keep mm. this going and be Mindy's maid of honor. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, it's it's bad. It is bad. Yeah. But yeah, so Mindy, she breaks down. She says she's been acting weird and he's been coming home smelling like Chanel. And, you know, I should have known. Like, I feel stupid because, yeah, we were having a thing when he was and, engaged and, to you. Yeah. And it's only then at that point. That Rachel says, oh, Mindy, you are stupid. Yeah. We're both so stupid. And then holds out her wrist and says, smells familiar. Whereas earlier when Mindy was like, he comes home smelling like Chanel, she like moves a bit to like hide the smell of her perfume, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And it's only because she feels like she's gotten even with Mindy or something. Yep. Not a fan. Or she wants to hurt her again because Mindy has just hurt her again. Yeah. It's It's weird. It's an odd relationship. They're all deeply toxic people, these three. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Joey, because then this is when he comes in while they're hugging and he just stares at them hornily and says, oh, my. Yeah. Stop it, Joey. That's enough. Yeah. He doesn't even do a good George Takei impression. (laughs) Oh, my. <laughs> you clearly think you do. I do. <laughs> it's not bad. Thank you. It's not as good as my Christopher Walken. Oh, my Christopher Walken's better. No, but none not. of them top my Ray Romano. <laughs> <laughs> what was Debra. that? <laughs> I can only say that one word. <laughs> Debra. <laughs> it's not even that good. <laughs> um. Uh, so then we're back at the apartment, and I really like this moment because Ross is doing a crossword. Um, oh yeah, I love this bit. Yeah, four letters, circle or hoop. <laughs> Chandler staring at the phone, yells out, "Ring, damn, damn it, it, ring!" ring. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and then later in the scene, what's the what's the one he's asking Phoebe for? Radiate. Oh uh, yeah, like he- he- heating device. Yeah, it's like radiator <laughs> and five letters. Five letters. Radiator. Radiator. Yeah. Oh, Phoebes. Yeah. Joey comes in to say, hey, did you know that our phone isn't working? I tried to call from the coffee shop. And it turns out that Chandler now really did turn the phone off. Yeah. He did what he had lied about earlier. Yeah. And he's freaking out yeah. all over again. Does he not have work at all today? <laughs> Are we always filming on weekends? Well, no one's at work no. today. I guess we don't know what day of the week it is. But this is one of the weird <laughs> things. Like, even if they're hanging out on a weekend, Monica's a chef. Mm. Phoebe's a masseuse. They would surely still work on weekends. Yep. These people just never work. No. <laughs> and yet afford amazing apartments. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the reason Joey was calling was that he spoke to the doorman across the street and he got the telescope guy's name. Oh, what's the name again? Sydney. Yes. Yes, yes. Because it's not clear whether it's a man or... Yeah. Man, yeah. man or woman. Neutral name. Neutral yeah. name. Nice yeah. and neutral. Yeah. Uh, but somehow from the name, I guess he got the number. I don't know if he looked them up in the phone book or something. But yeah. uh, So anyway, it he used calls. used to be a thing people did. And he starts, you know, telling them off, being real angry. And then he realizes that it's a woman. Mm. And he waves to her and she compliments his workout routine. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, then she says that Monica looked very pretty the other day in the green dress. Yeah, you looked like Ingrid Bergman or something. <laughs> yeah. And, and Monica's like, no. <laughs> I love I mean, the way she says that. I feel like, okay, yeah, I understand that it's flattering. But at the same time, I feel like remembering what someone wore days ago mm. makes it even creepier. Mm. Like, mm. to me... Earlier on, it was unclear, I think, if the telescope person was actually watching them or if they were like, you, you don't really know what they're doing. Mm. Like, Yeah, you don't know which window they're looking at. I well, mean, it's all or, bad. Or even maybe they're bird watching. I, I don't know. Pigeons? <laughs> Probably not. Just pigeons? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> 
But I feel like this moment here really steps it into creepy territory, and yet because it's a woman. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I think it's very weird. Why is she watching them? Yeah. Yeah, people watching is a thing, but, like, you can just go to a cafe. Don't do it with a telescope. That's I, I, lo- I love people watching. Like, I love to go to, like, a train station or something. Um, Ugh, then you have to be on a train. Uh, me, me and the guys at work. So if we're ever, like, travelling for work, we play a game called Ten in One, mm. where you sit at a cafe or something, and as people walk past you, you have to pick one of them to marry, right? Ah, okay. But you only get 10 people, and if you haven't picked by the 10th person, that's who you're marrying. Oh, that's tricky. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun game. <laughs> <laughs> so professional of you all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so then we cut to the dentist's office and Rachel walks in. He's like, you know, hey, sweetheart type thing. And then Mindy comes in. He's like, oh, what are you both doing here? Yeah. And I I love the way Rachel just takes charge of this scene. She's like, well, we are here to break up with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, Whereas Mindy's like, still calls him hello, sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah. With a, it's very New York. <laughs> thank you. Accent. Thank you. That was, that was good. Thank that you. was good news. <laughs> I was yeah. proud of it. <laughs> I can only do Boston. He parked his car in Harvard Yard. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> Would we say that? <laughs> uh, so Barry um, tries to, you know, he says he was weak. He only did it because he loves them, loves you so much. And they're like, well, which one are you talking to? Yeah. And he, he picks Mindy. Yeah. And he, um, but he actually, like, he kind of stands there considering for a second. Yeah. I this think, guy is a piece of shit. I think he picked Mindy because it was clear that she was uh, weaker than Rachel in that moment. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. God, he, he's a scumbag. Yeah. Um, and Rachel says, Having said please. That, so are they. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, but I, th- this leads to one of, I think, the funniest line in the episode when <laughs> Rachel says, please, the second time you couldn't have picked her out of a lineup. And Mindy says, you did it twice. <laughs> yeah. you know, well, you know, the first one didn't really Barry. count. I mean, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just standing there. Yeah. Uh, love that. Um, and he says to Mindy, you know, come back to a rumor with me. <laughs> there's, there's a deleted scene here that's not in the. Um, in the episode we watched, but where Rachel goes, what is it with you and Aruba? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I can see why they cut it. It's like not necessary, yeah. but yeah. I, I love all the friends cut scenes all the time. Yeah, yeah. We need to get the copies where they're all inserted in there. Mm, yes, that was on the DVD release, I mm, believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then uh, Barry's assistant calls in and says that a kid is choking on his retainer, so he has to rush out of the room. And this is where Mindy says, yeah, I'm probably still going to marry him. But uh, also, like, Barry doesn't just rush out of the room. He pauses and he's like, uh, uh, uh. And then he says to his receptionist, oh, I'll be right there. Don't go anywhere. Like, someone could be dying. <laughs> just fucking move, you yeah. dickhead. It's a, it's a kid. Yeah. I, oh, well, it doesn't matter if it's a kid or an, an adult. It's a person well, I mean, I choking. Guess. Can you think of a more American word than retainer? Because here we just call it a plate. Yeah, yeah. cantaloupe. <laughs> cantaloupe, yeah. But whenever I hear retainer... That? Why do they call it a cantaloupe? It always makes me... Oh, I lost my retainer. <laughs> I feel like that's such a like... <laughs> it was in everything in the 90s. Yeah. Every kid had a retainer and they always... Lo- I lost my retainer. <laughs> and what do they call... Remember when we were there? Oh, and I kept... I, I had to learn the salads. <laughs> It was arugula. Oh yes, and I was a like, rocket. I was yeah. like, "What? What's arugula?" Cilantro. Cilantro. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "What's that?" And I, yeah, I got used to it after a while. Yeah. But at first, I was like, "Do you have anything with like rocket or coriander?" I love those, and they were like, "What the fuck are you talking mm. about?" You know what I've learned though? We are the ones who say oregano wrong. Oregano it is actually oregano. Is it? It yeah, it is oh. genuinely. Yeah. Okay. Well. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm just going to go about my life anyway. So back to Friends. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, this is where Mindy says that, yeah, she's she's pretty sure she's still going to marry him. I know. It's so pathetic. And I love that Rachel thinks it's pathetic at this point. She's, we've, you know, she she relapsed. She, we've, we've got her back. Yeah. We've got the Rachel sort of worth admiring. But oh, no, she's still a piece of crap. No, she's Ra- a piece of crap. Yeah, she's Rachel just, is... She's not a good friend. Rachel is the worst of the friends. Like I said, on mm, this... Sometimes it's Joey at the moment. True. On this rewatch, like I said, I've I've actually been really surprised at... I had forgotten 
even though I watch it on repeat on repeat anyway, I had forgotten just how strong Jennifer Aniston's comedic sense is. Yeah, yeah. Like she's not just here because she's a pretty good. She is actually really, really funny. Yeah. Like of the six the of way them, she, the way she chooses to say things, yeah. she'll often wait and then say it with like a certain kind of like inflection in her voice. And especially we're not there yet, but when we get into some of the, like, <laughs> like the mid-seasons where she's just completely cooked, like her and Ross are basically in a competition Josh, to be the most deranged. You don't like, um, he doesn't like Josh? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> the way she says that. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I had forgotten just how funny she is. Of yeah. the six of them, I actually think she's right up there as like one of the funniest. Yeah, everyone talks about um, Matthew Perry, um, but I completely disagree mm, yeah um so then we're back at the apartment monica asks if rachel's okay and she says yes you know she always wondered if she made the right choice leaving barry and now she knows yeah and i really did. love this scene between them. I, I, I think that's good like i think that 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 sentiment really makes this storyline in this episode worthwhile yeah you know like you said before that you totally understood that with this episode they kind of wanted to have Rachel kind of fight against her past and mm. stuff. And I, I think you were absolutely right. Like that, I think, is what makes this episode worthwhile, that like she learned that and now she's kind of, you know, we're almost at the end of season one here. She's ready to like move forward yeah. with the rest of everything. Yeah. And I I was actually talking about I like the physical setup of this scene. I hate that it has to be turned into something dirty for Joey. Yeah, cuz they as they hug, they, they yeah. look really natural and they are best friends in real life. Yeah. And I guess yeah. this was the, you know, sort of formation of that, but they look really natural together. They look like two girlfriends sharing a deep and meaningful chat. Yeah. You know, they've got a glass of wine, like, you know, Monica's like I'm so proud of you and gives her a hug. Like this is what good girlfriends yeah. do. And then they fucking ruin it. Yeah, because as they're hugging, Joey walks in and he hornily stares at them again and says, big day. Oh, God. Does he mean big day for Rachel? Does he mean big day for him? I don't care. I don't. Furiously larping over and over again. (laughs) (laughs) It is a big day. (laughs) But that's Probably the end. not that big a day for Joey then. That's the end. Then we get the tag of the episode. And I, I really like that this tag is bu- it's a throwback to the opening of the episode. Yep. They're once again talking about mascots. And Joey says, well, you know, Mr. Peanut is the better dresser. Um, but, and then Phoebe asks if he knows that, Mr. that he's gay. And Ross says, I just want to clarify, are you outing Mr. Peanut? Yeah, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> People coming out is their journey. <laughs> um, <laughs> Come on, Phoebes. But then the the girl, Danielle, that Chandler had the date with, who he's been trying to call the entire episode, she comes in to check on him. Yeah. She couldn't get on to him and you it's know, so she's sweet. Sure I don't okay. I don't think this actress is very natural. Uh, no. I she, agree. The way she delivers her lines is very strange. Yeah. Um and you've just come from the scene that felt very natural between Monica and Rachel. And like the way this woman is like well, I I thought I'd come and check on you. It's, yeah. it's like, ah, stop that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, and Chandler like does a good job like bouncing off her, uh, yeah. being like, oh yeah, I'll you know, give you a call sometime. And then you know, uh, typical men versus women. He's like, how needy is that? Yes. <laughs> laughing because it's funny it's infuriating no it's really funny and yes i do think that part of it is the whole men versus women thing but i also think that a lot of it is chandler's character like yeah it's it's already been established that he breaks up with people for silly reasons you know he's he's really he's afraid of commitment he's i i I actually think that moment is really funny where he's like i'm not going to call her back like don't you think that was a bit needy i like like how they all hit him (laughs) i i I think that that was actually really really funny i think it's a good tag to this episode (laughs) yeah i mean it it you know brings his storyline back around yeah full circle that's so, where you started. Oh, you know, I quite like this episode. It's yeah. not it's not the strongest of season one. It's not one that I would purposefully throw on unless no. I'm just like, you know, letting it run. Yeah. Um, I'm a six out of ten. I think I'm a five on this one. Yeah, like, okay. It's a perfectly average episode. Yeah. It's there for character arcs. It's yeah. not there like for Yeah, true. Like nostalgic enjoyment of friends. Yes, I get what you're saying there. Yep. Well, next week we are getting to the one with the fake Monica. 
Oh, which yes. I really like. I thought we'd already recorded on that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I could have sworn we did. You know Maybe what? we've just watched it so many times and talked about it. Yeah. You know what we haven't done yet? What? A lightning round. Oh, yeah. Where you are forgot, we up didn't to? You? I'm ahead. I don't think you are. I'm certain of it. <laughs> I thought we were even. Okay, I'm going to go first. What is okay. Phoebe's younger half-brother's name? Frank Jr. Mm-hmm. <sighs> All right. All right, this is the easiest one in the world. Where does David the scientist guy move in order to take part in a three-year research trip? You haven't done this before, are you sure? Minsk? Maybe I'm just remembering the episode where we talked about Minsk. What's the second question? What was Ross and Chandler's college band called? Mm, now that's tricky. And I guess if we'd done it before... Yeah. I don't know... The really cool guys. Way. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Where were Ross and Emily supposed to go on their honeymoon? Greece. I'm going to need something very specific. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, Mrs. Geller, why are you cry? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Time's Mykonos. Up. Nope. Athens. Ha <laughs> oh, ha. Now we're even. Balls. <laughs> <laughs> Well, ah, oh, shit. All right. You know what? We're coming up to the end of the season. I probably need to actually go back and make sure I've got our scores right so that we know who wins. Mm, who wins over whom? <laughs> I don't know why I do that. <laughs> Uh, but thank you all for listening to the one where we watched. Um, please go and give us a rating on uh, Spotify. You can leave a review on Apple iTunes, just like Javon did. Let's petition to change the sound, everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what. If if we get 15 five-star no, reviews, no, all of which no. mention changing the sound, I'll do it. No, you need to do it anyway. <laughs> You just need to do it anyway. No, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, we are coming up to the end of the season. So I, I think that uh, once after we've done the finale, um, the episode after that will probably be like a recapping the season and stuff. So mm -hmm. maybe we should open the mailbag. If you if you want to get in touch with us, you can do that at pottymouthradio.com and pottymouthradio at gmail.com. Go check out all the rest of the shows on the Pottymouth Network. You can hear me talk music with Dave at... Uh, Hunt for the Perfect Album, or movies at uh, We Watched a Thing, or you can hear me play Dungeons and Dragons with a bunch of other people, which is really fun. <coughs> Nerd. <laughs> at uh, Time to Die, <laughs> um, which is really cool and <coughs> hip and fun. <laughs> That's what a nerd would say. <laughs> and we'll catch you next week. Not a good day for birds. <laughs> <laughs>